Okay, so uh, off video, I uh, made a little change. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, a few minutes ago earlier on, uh, that I was going to just go with the six ounce straight over. Then I thought to myself, oh, hang on a minute. I want to put more weight into this cowl for the nose weight. So what I did is I did these three strips without uh, two ounce cloth. So then I put a bunch of two ounce strips around, then the six ounce strips. So I've got a total of about eight ounces on average. Each one is overlapped. They're about uh, an inch of uh, cloth with a you know quarter inch overlap on each edge. And uh, that should add a little uh, eft to the uh, campy. Now, uh, one little tip. When you're using these brushes, always just trim the edge, the ends off. So it's nice and square like that. Otherwise, you've got little hooks on the ends, which can then pull the cloth out when you're uh, using it. That's something I learned a long time ago. Second tip is when you're coming to your parting plane, which is here, always make sure you wet out the cloth, like you can see here, at least a good, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter inch, whatever, past the parting plane. So that when this is green, which will be this afternoon, I can just come along with a, a, a knife and trim it very easy. If I didn't have resin all the way up, the cloth would tear and you wouldn't get a good uh, edge. This way, it will give you a really good edge. All right, time to uh, pop out the uh, cowl. So uh, sometimes uh, they pop right out like a bullet. Sometimes they just gently pop out. So let's see what the hell we can do with this. I'm set to 80 PSI. Try and push onto it. This is getting a little hard now. I really need to get a new one. There we go. Gently bently. And there we go. Everything's looking pretty good. Just a bunch of PVA on, as you can see, the green stuff there. So now she just needs to be uh, cleaned up and washed down with the hot water and soap. So uh, that's what I'll do now. I'll just go wash these parts. And uh, we'll go from there. I was hoping that would be one of the pop-out type, because that would have made a great sound. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've washed these off now with some uh, water. You can see it's shiny. Pretty shiny anyhow. Now, the, the uh, one thing about uh, when you're painting is the primer that I used, again, was this uh, Rust-Oleum, it's an automotive primer. So it's a little tougher than the cheap stuff. And it's flat, it's a flat gray, but you can see we're all nice and shiny here. So that is because the molds are reasonably shiny. These still need cleaning up and they would be shinier. So that's why you can, you know, you can actually use house paint, believe it or not, just latex wall paint or acrylic to uh, spray in the mold with a, a spray gun, airbrush, whatever your preference is. And uh, it'll come out nice and shiny. Now, if you want a dull finish, then obviously you're gonna have to basically either have a dull looking mold, which isn't a great idea, or you can uh, just put a very light uh, coat of, uh, you know, matte or flat or whatever you want to call it on um, afterwards. And this plane will be painted, so it'll actually end up with a gloss paint on it. Just from a spray bomb, nothing fancy. Uh, these are the scissors I used to uh, cut the wet cloth while it was being laid up. And to clean them, simply get a flat blade screwed, I mean screwdriver flat bladed uh, razor blade, I think you call it a razor blade, and, and simply uh, just put it on a 45 degree angle, 40 degree angle, and just clean it up. And then just run it down the, uh, 
the cutting part of the uh, or the edge of the blade, I guess. And uh, funny enough, doing this actually keeps resharpening the blade. Oh, that's what it seems to be. It's either that or I've got great scissors, one or the other. And now, that's good enough to uh, cut the cloth with. So I keep these, they last uh, several times. And uh, now we'll uh, look at laying up the actual plane. When you're laying up a mold, the last thing you want is this. Banging around like that. So what I do, uh, I just use uh, old pieces of uh, foam, slide it in, try and make it a little stable, one at the end here, and that's good. Because otherwise you're trying to put the cloth in and everything and the thing's wobbling all over the place. You're just going to have a whole bunch of grief and everything. Okay, time to uh, lay one half the fuse lodge up. Now, I've already made some goop up to go in the corners. Uh, if you want to see how I did that, just look at part two. It's in there of the same uh, build series. I've trimmed the edge of my brush so it's nice and square. Got a little air there, get that out. And I'm just going to uh, put a light coating of resin just where I'm going to be putting the goop for now. I know it's hard to see uh, with the camera, unfortunately. Um, the shot layout doesn't really uh, allow me to provide a good view. But you'll get the gist of it. So now I'm just going to go around all the sharp uh, edges, and up the sides a little bit. Not putting a whole pile on right now. Uh, the biggest thing is try not to scratch the uh, primer with anything metal, like here, because uh, that will instantly peel the primer away from from the PVA. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, oh, before I do that, I better put my goop in into the sharp bits. So uh, just putting a little bead of it into the corners. And that way we can avoid voids which in case you don't know what a void is it's where you get like a big air pocket a bit there and a bit there and that finishes it off there we go I just can't get in this damn corner oh there we go okay now time to put some of the six inch in so we'll dry our brush off a little bit and now we'll start uh, trying to get some of this cloth in uh, sorry three quarter ounce cloth I should say yeah this three quarter ounce cloth is really good because it forms beautifully. It's kind of like a super lightweight tissue paper, I guess. All pieces. As I said in uh, part two, this video is part three, by the way. As I said in part two, the biggest uh, thing is use small pieces when you're first starting off rather than trying to use big pieces, which are gonna cause you all kinds of grief. The, uh, I have about two or three ounces of nose weight on this plane. And uh, I wanna get away from having, you know, lead glued and taped and God knows what to secure it on the plane, so I'm gonna build up the front of this so it's a lot heavier than normal. 
because you know weight is weight I need it anyhow to get the balance so it really doesn't matter that I uh, add a bunch of extra weight to the front but I'm going to try and keep the tail end as light as possible so I don't get tail heavy I'm just running down this uh, inside root part uh, yeah, I guess I could use this bigger piece here. So we'll lay this one in. Just get it going with a bit of resin, working it down. This should hopefully come up on camera good. Forming it into the corner. Add a little bit of resin now just to get a good grip. Now this is the front of the fuselage here. So uh, I'm going to be probably tripling the six ounce cloth in this area. And that way I get some weight plus a bunch of strength. And I don't know why I never thought of that with the other four or five of these that we've laid up. This one first. I think it's coming up on camera, but you can see how I'm just gently laying it in, padding it into the corner, so at any air uh, pockets, what might be under the goop, get pulled away. And it's from here forward where I'm gonna go heavy. Not that it needs it, this plane uh, with just uh, some two ounce and six ounce cloth is plenty strong enough. But, so my microphone battery died. Um, I did switch the audio stuff a few weeks ago and to be honest with you, this new one is not very good. Uh, it costs a lot more than the last one, but it doesn't work as well as the uh, lesser quality product. Uh, so anyhow, now I'm applying, uh, let's see, this is the front of the plane. So I'm applying, uh, I think it's four by eight pieces of uh, two ounce cloth for the second layer. Um, then I'm going to move to uh, six ounce cloth towards the last, uh, let's see, uh, quarter of the rear plane. Uh, I'm just going to single uh, cover that. But at the front of the plane, I'm going to double or triple up the, uh, the six ounce. So anyhow, I've just sped the, uh, the video up and uh, just kind of you know i'm sure you're bored with looking at all this layup stuff so i'm just skipping ahead and uh, showing you but the biggest thing you can look at this which is the really biggest tip of all time as far as i'm concerned anyhow is you can see that i'm doing it in small sections and i'm overlapping each one approximately half an inch overlap to each uh, segment of cloth and this basically, if it's six ounce cloth, then it really creates like a 12 ounce equivalent rib. So it's a way I have figured out over the years for my big scale planes where, you know, the fuselages or whatever are quite big. So you want to keep it strong, but keep the weight down as much as possible. So this is the best tip I can give you. Small pieces, smaller pieces overlap. I mean, I could easily just put a three foot length of cloth in one piece over this because it's fairly easy to cover, no sharp edges, but it, it wouldn't have the strength of these smaller pieces. And the weight gain from the overlap is absolutely minimal. I mean, we're talking just a few grams here. So that's my advice. I suggest you do it.
Now, this section, even though I've sped it up, you can see how, our, how the segments are overlapping. So it, this really shows it well. And uh, it's just creating uh, all these little strengthening ribs. And uh, I'll tell you, it really, really does work great. And uh, anyhow, I'm just going to continue uh, down to the end and that will finish uh, pretty much this layup, I believe. Alrighty, now that we've finished laying up uh, the cloth, uh, I'm using a, a folded paper towel and I'm just basically coming down where I've laid everything up, pressing down ever so gently, being very careful not to pull the uh, cloth away from the mold. And I'm just soaking up any excess resin. Uh, I find a paper towel is best for this. I know a lot of guys over the years that I've been doing this uh, sometimes use uh, toilet paper. Uh, but to be honest with you, I find that if, if there's any excess resin and there's a lot of it and the toilet paper gets really soaked, it just starts to tear on you sometimes and it's just more trouble than what it's worth. So I, I just use the paper towels. Now another big tip which is many times overlooked is when you wet up cloth, of various you know weights and so forth uh, it's so easy let's say you've got a two ounce cloth as your first layer you've got some six ounce segments you're putting in it's very easy that you can miss uh, a section of let's say the six ounce over the two and uh, you end up with a real weak spot which has to be repaired afterwards so what I found is using this handy dandy uh, little uh, LED light, um, I can see the textures much clearer than without the light. So, so it's kind of like one of those CSI things. <laughs> the light shows everything. So uh, highly recommend uh, that you use a light, you post check your layup. It's so easy guys to make a mistake and i've made lots of them and that's where i've learned you know all these little tricks and techniques from so these are what i want to pass on to you folks at least you new folks who are doing this for the you know first or second time um learn from us old dudes uh, we have lived life and made the mistakes so hopefully you won't So one last final check, double checking, triple checking, whatever. You only get one shot at this, so you don't want to really uh, blow it. So uh, the mold, I mean, the layup looks really good and I'm happy with it. 